The opposite of hating your body is not loving what you look like. It's actually listening to your body's wisdom and listening to your intuition. So think about this in terms of interacting with another person. The opposite of hating another person is not just liking what they look like on the outside, right? It's listening to their perspectives and their beliefs and their needs and desires. Same thing when it comes to our bodies. So listening to our bodies is how we reconnect to our intuition and to that inner healing wisdom that is within us. Our bodies know what we need to heal on all levels of healing, right? Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. So in order to get to the next step of healing for us, whatever that looks like, it involves learning how to listen to our bodies and connect with our intuition at an even deeper level. So I used to be a nutritional therapist and I, I transitioned away from doing that primarily because I realized that diet and supplements can't solve every health issue. The root issue of any health issue, think about this, it's being disconnected from your body, being disconnected from your own intuitive healing wisdom and being disconnected from nature. And so this is why I created a system called Body Connection Coaching and practice that now with my clients because I really wanted to address that deeper level of healing that necessitates everyone getting in touch with their own inner wisdom and um, you know those kind of healing protocols aren't found in diet books they're not found in supplemental protocols they're only found within you so this concept of listening to your body can sound pretty vague and abstract right so what I'm going to do today is give you three very concrete, actionable steps to listen to your body and get in touch with your intuition. Now, something to consider is that we all have different learning styles. This means we all have ways that we best process and take in information. So some of us are more kinesthetic learners, and this means we process information best when we're experiencing it through our bodies or when we're moving. Others are more auditory learners, and this means that they will process information best when they're listening to information. And some of us are visual or um, it's called reader-writer kind of learning style, which is pretty self-explanatory. It means that you learn best through reading or writing. Probably you were the note taker in class when you were listening to lectures, and, and that's how you best processed information. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share these three techniques. You can try them all out and you can kind of determine which is a best fit for you to take forward and practice on a regular basis. So the first technique for listening to your body is channeling your body's voice through writing. This is pretty self-explanatory that it's a best fit for those of you who are the reader, writer type of learning style. This is a revelatory process for so many of my clients, especially those who like to journal and really like to write. So all you're gonna need for this is a journal or a notebook, a pen, and the timer on your phone. What you're gonna do is set the timer for six minutes and you're gonna start writing in your notebook, dear your name. So if I was doing this exercise, it would be dear Lauren. And then on the next line, you write, this is your body and this is what I want to tell you. And then you're gonna start writing from the voice of your body, from the perspective of your body, through a process called speed writing. This is the key here. It's not ordinary journaling because you don't stop to think. You keep your pen moving at all costs. So I tell my clients that you have to write faster than your hesitation. And this is how you actually surpass your conscious mind. Your conscious mind, which is trained kind of by our culture and our upbringing to filter out our intuition and to filter out our subconscious wisdom. If you write fast enough, you can actually start to capture your subconscious on the page and capture your intuition on the page. A great example of this is from the book 1984 by George Orwell. I'm sure most of you are familiar. It's a very timely book for this time that we're living in. Uh, so I would recommend it if you haven't read it yet. But in that book, the main character is um, writing in his journal. This is actually a forbidden uh, experience in his time and place. So he finds himself kind of falling into a mindless 
days while he's journaling, he looks down at his paper and he sees that he has written down with big brother, down with big brother over and over. So what had happened was he was actually kind of surpassing his conscious mind and had written down his most subconscious intuitive thoughts. Of course, in this time in the novel, this was actually a form of thought crime to think something wrong uh, in this dystopian time. But that's the power, I think, of this story is that that wisdom is always within us even when our culture has trained us to fear and despise that inner voice within us. Back to this process of speed writing, you need to write faster than your hesitation and uh, allow it to be messy. Ignore grammar, ignore spelling, just keep your pen moving. Now when the timer rings, you're gonna finish whatever sentence you're writing and you're gonna sign it off, love your body. And then what I want you to do while this is fresh in your mind is you just go through and read what the voice of your body has communicated to you. What you're gonna find is probably some of it is messy and nonsensical, at least this is my own experience and with my clients, but some of it is really powerful, rich wisdom. And if there's anything that stands out to you on the page, I want you to underline it, you can circle it or put a star next to it uh, while this is fresh in your mind. So this is a process, a practice, and what I recommend is that you do it at least five days a week. I mean, it's only like seven minutes total. It's a beautiful daily practice to get more in touch with your intuition, especially for those of you who already have a journaling practice. Maybe you're familiar with the concept of morning pages. Um, incorporating this practice is beautiful. Uh, and when I'm working with my clients, I actually have them go through 30 days of similar speed writing prompts that I give them so that they really build up that neural plasticity and that uh, brain patterning for accessing their intuition this way. The next technique for listening to your body is energy testing. Now, some people think that energy testing isn't really scientific because science has yet to measure the frequencies of subtle energy that are involved with this process. So our bodies are constantly communicating through very subtle frequencies of energy with our environment uh, and with everyone we're interacting with. Something to keep in mind is that only 60 years ago, science was unable to measure and even comprehend the frequencies of energy that we now harness for cell phone communication, right? That spectrum of electromagnetic frequency uh, was previously unmeasured by science and now it's part of our daily life. So moving and sensing subtle energy is the original form of healing. It is the original way that healers in all different cultures accessed the body's intuitive wisdom. And we can do that today. Uh, you can wait until science hopefully and very quickly catches up to the frequencies of energy that the body is attuned and sensitive enough to sense and feel. That might take a couple hundred years though, frankly, for our scientific measuring devices to progress to that level of sensitivity, that level of sensitivity that is already present in our bodies. Um, I have chosen not to wait that long because I really want the healing that is available to me through the incredible process of energy testing. You can make that choice as well, or you can choose to wait until science has caught up with the immense wisdom of our bodies. I'm going to link you to another video where I go in depth and show you two techniques of energy testing yourself. It would be a lot to fit in this one video. So the first technique is using a pendulum to energetically tap into the wisdom of your body to get yes or no answers to specific questions. And the second technique is a form of muscle testing where you actually use your hands and it involves somebody else muscle testing you to tap into your body's wisdom and get a yes or no response. And you can use this to determine if certain foods or supplements or even lifestyle choices are a good fit for you and will really nourish and foster your health. The third technique for listening to your body is guided visualization. And this works best for those of you who are auditory learners or who learn best through listening. Now, guided visualization is where you imagine yourself in a very safe and relaxing environment and then you use the power of your mind to turn on the healing processes of your body. Guided visualization is 
becoming more and more used in Western medicine uh, environments because it's evidence-based and it's so powerful in turning on the healing processes of the body, of supporting the immune system, and even reducing anxiety. So there's been some very interesting studies on the power of guided visualization in those areas. What's interesting is guided visualization works because the brain actually doesn't really discern the difference between imagined reality and physical reality. I know this is shocking and it's really a paradigm shift for science, but it's what neuroscience, the study of the brain, is showing us. So if you're interested in this, there's a great book by Dr. Norman Doidge called The Brain That Changes Itself. You can look up that. One of the studies that he talks about in this book is where there were two groups of participants and one played uh, a finger exercise on a piano keyboard. A second group of participants just imagined playing that simple finger exercise on a keyboard. And what they found was at the end of the study, the first group and the second group had developed the same neuroplasticity, which means the same wiring in their brain to trigger the muscles that correlate to the finger exercise. Isn't that crazy? Imagining it developed their brain in the sim same way as actually physically doing the exercise. So through guided visualization, we can really take advantage of this phenomena. Now I create specific guided visualizations for my clients that allow them to turn up the volume on their intuition and really get in touch with the wisdom of their bodies, especially around healing their relationship with food and intuitive eating. Uh, that's where I tend to specialize with my clients. Um, and what I've done is I've also created a free guided visualization for you, specifically on getting more in touch with your intuition and listening to your body's wisdom. So what you can do is go to empoweredsustenance.com slash body dash listening. I will put the link on the screen and below this video so you can find it easily. And you can sign up for uh, this free resource that will have instructions for everything that I've talked about in this video. Instructions for the writing exercise, the video on the two ways to muscle test yourself, and this free guided visualization that will allow you to turn up the volume on your intuition. So I hope that resource is helpful to you and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.